Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Spell Venture, which takes you uh, through a program of experiential learning. Uh, you get to experience entrepreneurship through this entire program. You form companies, build products, sell it, and live through the whole experience of being an entrepreneur. Um, in today's session, what we're gonna do is give you a full recap of the entire five weeks in terms of how the whole program was built, what was being discussed in the various sessions, and how you came through the journey, and a quick snapshot of everything that we have learned. So let's get started. So the original pitch was, this is an experiential program, and as part of experiential program, this is not about just lectures and notes and books that you read, but sessions that you learn and apply and as you apply, you are actually going through the whole journey of being an entrepreneur. Um, Bella Venture is all about you know, experiential entrepreneurship and it goes through the different stages of brainstorming, ideating, forming companies you know, in groups, building products, marketing and selling. And it takes a complete learn by doing approach. It has a personalized mentoring where you get to have somebody that you can reach out to at every stage of your company, get the tools and inputs that you need and answer questions. It's an extremely hands-on session, which means that what you learn, you're gonna apply and you're gonna be building products regardless of what stream or area or domain you're building it in. It could be you know, science related, it could be technology related, it could be arts and crafts, it could be on literature, it could be on cuisine, it could be any number of things. It really doesn't matter what your company is about, but it will be hands-on. And, and you know, at the end of the day, to be an entrepreneur and go through this journey, there are three things that's important. Teamwork, network, and hard work. Once you bring those three together, you'll be able to achieve your goals. And the whole commitment from Pala Venture is in 50 hours, you will be able to go through the entire journey and have your first entrepreneurship experience. So let's look at how the whole program is structured. Um, the initial part of the uh, Pella Venture program talks about roles, ideas, and teams. Now, we discuss a lot about what is a company, what are the various functions in a company, and you know that spans across building products, marketing, the finance, the sales angles, the various roles and titles that are there in a company, um, like the CEO, the chief executive officer, the financial officer, the engineers, or um, people who are actually employees, the marketing managers, and people who drive marketing and sales, things like that. Part of getting to know what a company is made of is for you to form companies and have those roles defined. and. Um, you know, to begin with, we'd like to form companies not individually, but preferably in teams because that gives a lot more fun experience. It has brings diverse ideas and mindset together and you work as a team. And when you have a team, you can apply these roles that are there in real companies. Um, teams are critical, that's why. And when you have teams, there is a much more collaborative uh, um, capability. There is a collective intelligence and collective skill set that comes together to make it a fun experience to be an entrepreneur. And you also want to make sure that as a team, you have an inclusive environment where you respect each other within the team. Everybody gets to do something. Everybody's responsibility is important for the success of the company. You don't want only few people working and others not. Um, you want to get everybody engaged. So being inclusive is important. Being able to listen to everybody's ideas and arriving at decisions um, about the whole teamwork and the teaming aspect. Um, then there is the whole aspect of ideating. How do you ideate? How do you brainstorm? Um, the most important thing about companies is they unify the talent of the team to come up with product ideas. Um, we uh, went through a lot of details about if you have five people with five different skills and ideas, you don't want to go and say, I want to build five products. You want to find a way to combine them together discuss a lot more and see if you can come up with one or two compelling products that merges the skills and the ideas of the entire team 
thereby everybody feels like that they have the skin in the game but everybody also brings their skill and strength to play to make it a success at the end of the day um and and so this is a a a, a, a Venn diagram of sorts that we looked at and Pella mentioned many times on the journey when you want to pick a product you want to make sure that the talent within the team the ideas that you generate and the need for the product all have some kind of an intersect the sweet spot for a product is you have the skill to build it there are ideas that are really using that skill set and these are ideas that has a need in the market where somebody will buy it when you build it so that's the sweet spot for the product and um there is also this this notion of being smart where you want to start discussing early on uh, as you form the team in terms of being very specific about what you want to build and why you want to build them as a product having measurables like how many you want to build what's the cost of it at what price do you want to do it being very specific that's the measurable achievable make sure that as you go through the 50 hours of pella venture it might be in 2 months 3 months or in a month you are building something that you can actually do in that time frame not something that's too grand that makes it very hard for you to finish and then you're not able to reap the benefit of the entire life cycle so be realistic about what you can do make sure that the products that you build are relevant there is a need for it people will buy it and of course be time bound being time bound is always important because that way you go through the experience but you also remember a product when launched at the right time has value when it takes too long it's too late right so you want to be time bound and that's the smart uh, smartness behind uh, how to become successful the specific measurable achievable relevant and time bound um here are some examples we talked about uh which which again brings out the 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 three uh circle right the talent the idea and the need intersection the top one is an example of a team that had various talents from arts dance craft sports drawing and they had brainstormed and come up with many different products which suits each one of the individual talent but as they sat down together and unified the talent they came up with this one in this case this was a story or a fiction story uh because they wanted to write stories they had artwork in the story because they were artists in the team and there were also people who are very uh, good at um, uh, cuisine and you know dishes and master chef kind of a skill set so what they did was they wrote a novel where in the storyline there were um, areas of uh, uh, you know dishes mentioned in the narrator and at the end of the book there was a recipe for all of the dishes that came in the storyline so again pulling all of that together this is another one where they wanted to do plays and do jewelry um design uh, you know uh, fashion design so what they did was they decided to do a you know theater theater uh, performance which went on series and the costumes and the jewelry that they wore or used in the theater during the play was also sold as a add on to the uh, theatrical uh, uh play sales that they did which is an interesting idea um the next one was around uh, uh craft making the there was a there was expertise about using clay and building lot of home decor craft there was also again wanting to do some home decor utility items and jewelry so they started to create uh, eco friendly jewelry and eco friendly home decor items which was an interesting idea that pulled together uh, all of the talent again the idea here is bring all of the talent together in the team to come up with some kind of a unified way to come up with a compelling unique product rather than make a product for each member's talent and of course keep in mind what's the need is there a need for it will people buy it right so these are just examples um and then we talked about you know you're a company it's an entrepreneur so it needs to have a company name so what's the company name all about what is the logo how to build logos what's a motto and then we uh, went through this various examples of different popular companies their names their logos and mottos uh, mottos are three four words that indicates and represent what the company or the products are about the logo is catchy creative they can be artwork they can be made out of alphabets and numbers 
and so the whole idea is keep it simple catchy creative and unique so that it stands out and people know what it is and they are curious to know it builds in level of inquisitiveness from people so they like and they expect the products to also come out in the same creative manner so we went through a lot of these examples of naming your company creating a logo and having a motto and then we started to get into you know once you're getting in you know form the company i know the roles i know what my team strengths are their talent is then you start to say hey what products do i want to build this is when you sit down agree on the products that you're going to build make sure that you discuss everybody is aligned you may go through one or two rounds of saying i want to build this by combining the talent uh, a day or two later you may feel like oh this doesn't look good you may want to change it a little bit here and there but then finally arrive at what you want to build make a list of them and make a list of how many you want to build here is an example you want to really be very clear about the product name product name should be very simple couple of words that really catchy a description that says what is it about what is its uniqueness and how many you want to build we also said after you've done this ideation of what you want to build you want to talk to a few potential customers you don't want to tell exactly what you're building but you want to kind of engage in a discussion early before you start building hey i'm thinking of this area i'm thinking of building this product hey customer what do you think do you have some ideas uh, do you have some feedback will you buy it if we you know built it will you be willing to pay for it when you have that discussion you will get a lot of good inputs from the potential customers you want to explain the idea but not the details of the product because you want to be at a high level because when you start to give the details of the product in the first meeting with the customer then it sounds like you're trying to sell them or convince them you don't want to do it because you haven't built it yet the purpose of doing this is before you start building if you want to fine tune something you can by engaging with the customers early you also get their interest you also get to know how many you want to build that's the whole idea of it and here is an example of hey uh, not only did they want to build these two products they changed the numbers because they felt there is you know less or more interest but by talking to customers they also found they could build one more product and they added to it so it's kind of interesting right so you want to make sure that you get into your product ideation have it recorded in a table make sure you capture the uniqueness and how many you want to build engage in a discussion at a high level with a potential few customers get their feedback finding your product again before you start building it okay so that's what we did in those sessions then once we bottomed out and we know exactly what we want to build we started to look at what's called as product uniqueness we call that differentiator why what makes your product really unique is it because it's price conscious it's you know inexpensive is it because it's very high quality or is it because nobody else has built something like that it's the first of its kind you know there should be some key value why your product is unique and uh, it's good to write down what those two or three things that makes your product unique because this will later on be used for you to advertise and sell and market the product it's also important because if there isn't anything unique in your product then you may want to say hey should i add some features in it to make it unique so we talked about product uniqueness then we talked about project plans plan plan is very important now you're getting into a phase of hey i've got my products that i know what i want to build i want to go build you don't want to just build without a plan you want to make sure everybody is involved there are different phases of the project plan you may be buying raw materials then you need to figure out who buys what how many how soon then there is going to be that phase of the project where you're going to build it which means how many people are going to sit down and build what by when and then there is a selling part so a project plan is all about who does what activity by when and you want to get as specific as possible how many do i want to buy you don't want to just simply say um hey john go buy um oil paint you want to say john please buy you know three colors four tubes by this date so that it's very clear otherwise john says go buy oil paint he may buy 10 of the same color you might then say oh my god that's not what i meant i need three different colors and i need only two so you would have already spent the money which is always dangerous because you want to be very careful with your money how much you're spending to build a product so project plan is all about specifics 
Um, we showed examples of the different phases where you need to plan. Look at the plan if something changes, some date changes, correct it. Keep it always active. There is an online tool to use also called the Gantt chart that you can use because that can show dependency in the activity. So a project plan is important before you start doing, building anything. Then you start to track your expense. This table is the expense tracker. Expense is the money you have spent. Money you spend as a company to build a product. This could be raw materials, it could be transportation charge, it could be money you pay for labor, right? All of these are expenses and you want to track your expenses. Your total expense will become important for you to calculate later how you want to price the product because this is the money that you're spending. But where did you get the money in the first place? That's the capital. Capital is the money you received to set up the company and run the company. Run the company meaning capital is the money given to you to go build the products. Now somebody would have given you a capital as goodwill. Somebody will say it's a loan and you have to return it back. How will you return? By building products, selling, making the profits, giving the money back and then you become loan free. So if it is a loan, then you'll have to pay back. But if it's a seed money that they've given you for you to go through this program, that's good. But you still want to make sure that whenever you received money, not spent, you received money, you received money not for selling a product, but for you to run the company, you write it in your capital table here. Here is an example of the company receiving three times capital money totaling thousand rupees, right? That's your total capital received. The available capital is how much is left after you've spent some money. So in this case, you spent 325 rupees. You spent it for building the product. So your available capital is only 675 rupees. So that's the capital tracker. So we learned about planning, expense tracking, and capital tracking. And more importantly, also documenting and capturing the uniqueness of the product you're building. And then you go start spending your time building the product. And as you build and you're completing or near completion of building, you get into the phase of advertising, pricing, and selling. Advertising has, you know, two big areas, word of mouth, you talk to people about what you're building in your school, in your communities, neighborhood, teachers, friends and family, or you could email, you could put it on your Facebook account, your Instagram or Twitter handle. Um, but more importantly, you don't want to spam. You don't want to do cold calls. You don't want to broadcast. These are bad practices. Putting it in your own account, talking about it to people is always okay. So make sure that you are starting to advertise. And when you start to advertise, you may also want to build, make flyers and pamphlets and brochures about your product, those are other things. So even all of your advertising activity, you want to plan who's going to do what and then put it into your project plan. Then comes the pricing. Now you started to build, how do you say, what is the price tag for the product? There are two important aspects for the price tag. One is you calculate all the expense for building it and then you choose a profit percentage. So for example, this is all the money spent. This is your expense tracker. So this company spent 2000 rupees buying various things and also transportation charge totally and they spend 2000 rupees to build 10 nature 10 10 products and the product being nature painting so they spent 2000 rupees to build 10 nature paintings now they got to figure out how much they're going to sell these paintings for so they put a profit percentage of 20 percent you start somewhere you start with 10 percent 15 20 Again, you check the affordability of your customer and you put a starting number. How do you check the affordability of the customer? You want to test by asking a few people, hey, I'm doing nature painting. Will you be willing to buy it for 500 rupees, 200 rupees and see what their reaction is? So you start off with a profit percentage. Your total cost of building it is 2000 rupees. You build 10. So the cost of making one is 200 rupees. Now, if I put a profit of 20%, the way you calculate is the cost of building one plus the cost of building one into the profit percentage, it'll give you what should be the price of one nature painting. That's 240 rupees. So while it took 200 rupees to actually make one painting, you're gonna charge 240. So net, net, that's a 20% profit. And then once you put this price tag, you start to sell. Now you build 10, you may sell all 10, or you may sell lesser. Here is an example, you sold all 10. When you sold each one at 240 and you sold all 10, 
you get a total sales of 2400 rupees what's important is you want to track every sale who bought it what product did you sell how many what's the unit price what's the total price and which date this is an important sheet because you're taught tracking money so at the end of it you have the total sales you have the total expense and then when you go on you can do your profit and loss so i spent totally you know i sold totally all of my 10 paintings i got 2400 rupees for selling all 10 and it costed me 2000 rupees to actually make those 10 so 2400 minus 2400 rupees positive number that's your profit if you sold lesser let's say you sold only 6 but you built you spent 2000 and you you built you made 10 paintings it will be 1440 minus 2000 that will be a negative number a negative number of 560 that would be your loss okay so you got to figure out how to calculate those and then figure out arrive at what's the profit and loss and that might be a loss on that day the next day you may sell more paintings and you may break even or you may become profitable so that's the recap of everything that we have done of course in the middle of all this is your effort to actually building the product that's the one that takes time that's the one that takes a lot of planning but you go with the full picture and you go through the various stages and all of these things that we talked about the planning writing what's the list of products what's the uniqueness in your product how do i track the capital the money i receive to run the company how do i track all the expenses the money the company spends to build the product how do i do the pricing how do i track all my sales sales order how do i derive the profit and loss all of the things that i showed in the table is available in the Pella Venture Google Sheet that you have access to. You can take that spreadsheet. It's either a Google Sheet or an XLS. It does have formulas already. Feel free to change it, use it. It, it becomes a good tool for you to run through the whole, you know, uh, program and in your own company, like, uh, you know, both the project planning, the product specification, the product uniqueness, as well as uh, uh, the, the whole uh, uh, concept of, you know, keeping track of your money your capital, your expense, your sales, and then finally the profit and loss. With that, we close the recap of everything that we talked in the four sessions. I really hope you had a fun experience with this uh, classes. The fun is not in the classes. The classes that I give in these videos is probably the most boring. The fun is when you take this, sit with your three, five people company, Go through the entire process working with a mentor a teacher or a coach and going through this journey and then when you sell and you make the money and you feel you've accomplished that something that's the true fun experience and that's the experiential part of Pella Venture. i really hope you like it uh, feel free to send me your inputs or comments i'm here to always uh, respond to any questions that you may have thank you